Nikki. I love the events you host, um, Remote Work Academy, um, your speaking gigs you did uh, for um, Doc Williams on um, Brand Factory and uh, Agora Post. Um, your own event, uh, the Remote uh, Work Academy, and um, your talk on Agora Post were my favorites in that order. Um, can you tell us how you got into events? Yeah, so this is going to go, we're going to go back. First of all, hello to everyone who's joining us. Uh, and thank you for inviting me to join you, Erica. It's been, uh, I love you coming on to some of my events and, and sharing and, and collaborating with us. I remember you being on Doc's um, uh, talk. Uh, I don't even know what you call that live stream, and yeah. uh, and that was a lot of fun. So, uh, I started with events before they were online. So so before we got into summits and virtual events and these sort of things, I was a marketing manager for a co working space here in Australia in Sydney, uh, and that's going back to two thousand and around 2013, 2014, uh, was when I was the, um, the marketing manager uh, at the time. And so one of the uh, role, rec like one of the jobs that I was um, tasked with was to actually host a series of events in the space. Uh, and then part of that was, you know, uh, identifying what the program would look like you know, every quarter, um, who the speakers were going to be, what the topics were going to be, what the community wanted, um, and also looking at uh, inviting community members to be speakers, you know, and, and, uh, and also working with external partners like General Assembly and some, some other bigger brands uh, to coordinate a series of events. So it was all um, identifying the program, promoting it, uh, you know, getting bums on seats, as we used to, used to say, uh, and then post uh, event um, leveraging whatever content we created as well so back then it was articles and videos um, and and so my first ever uh, conference was actually a live one day event in Melbourne so I had to fly down to Melbourne uh, so if you know the geography in Sydney it's about a two hour flight but uh, you know if you were to drive it's 12 hours uh, so I flew down there I met with the partner that I was working with he was a um, uh, the the community manager for the space and we struck up a nice relationship and we you know we made it happen um, and so that's how I really got cut my teeth in the world of events uh, and then we then started to play with a tool called lab which I think you might remember um, it, it was the earlier early early version of tools like the ones we're using now you know like StreamYard and, 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 and these sort of things uh, and that was around 2015 and we hosted a series of online virtual events for our members uh, and then you know I had uh, authors and I had like people who were content marketers and, and before content marketers were was it even a thing like these people were just amazing at what they were doing and so I had this idea of hey we should really learn from these people and so I invited them on as guests and it was I, I learned that events are a really great strategy to connect with people that you want to connect with that normally you probably wouldn't be able to get to them right uh, because it's they're just too busy or they're they're out on the you know promoting their books or whatever they're doing um, but when you say hey I've got an audience and I want you know to invite you to come and speak to my audience and share what you do really well um, nine out of ten times they would say yes right uh, and so that's how I, I, the first series of events I did online was, was doing just one-on-one -on -one interviews like we're doing now. Uh, and then I kind of combined the, the conference that we ran with the, all the events I was doing on a weekly basis, put that all together onto this online platform, and then started to um, have this idea in my mind that I wanted to host some kind of summit summit started to take off um, as I know you, you you've observed over the years and uh, in 2019 I for whatever reason I just felt you know I want to give it a go I want to see what it's like to actually coordinate start from an idea to execution um, and and what would that look like and so that became a remote business summit uh, and and at the time, this is pre pre pandemic, right? So the world hadn't blown up with Zoom yet. Like this, this was you know we were still, uh, you know, months, almost a year or a year away 
you know, f- or 10 months away actually from um, everyone coming online and, and working from home and doing all these sort of things. And, uh, but I had already observed the trends. I had already seen that, you know, I'd been work- working online for five years, um, running my business completely remote. You know, I don't have local meetings. I, I like everything, all my meetings are, are over Zoom, over, used to be over Skype. Um, and so for me, I saw, okay, well, this is two things that are happening in the world. One is the rise of the, what we're calling the gig, the gig economy, which is, you know, the world of freelancing and the world of, you know, people, you know, running their own businesses and starting e-commerce companies and whatever it is. Uh, and then the other side, the other thing that's happening is um, people working from home or working from cafes or co-working spaces, right? And so uh, these two trends were really taking off. And so I thought, okay, well, there's got to be a group of people out there who are interested in learning more about how to do that. How do you build a successful online company or online business and and they want to learn from the people who've done it and then there's going to be a whole bunch of other people who are um, wanting to know how to be a digital nomad which is something my wife and I did for 18 months after we got married right and so how do you work from your laptop and travel around the world and and do all those things so I kind of put those two things two worlds together into one summit and I invited 25 speakers to come and speak uh, on that event and then that became a product. So now I have that sitting on remotebusinesssummit.com uh, and people can go and grab that. You know, uh, It's really interesting because all those topics that we spoke about on that summit are still relevant today and will continue yes. to be, you know? Um, and that's where I, uh, so with the talk that you saw that I did for Social Pulse Summit, uh, which was how to use LinkedIn to plan and promote your online events, right? That was exactly what I did to, to, to build Remote Business Summit. So a lot of it came from um, putting together a strategy on how am I going to connect to these speakers. A lot of these speakers I didn't know. Like, they, like I didn't know them. I probably knew like five people um, that were speakers on that event. And the remaining 20 came from LinkedIn. They also came from um, uh, a couple of websites. They're like media, media websites. Uh, Haro, have you heard of Help a Reporter Out? Um, I heard it from you. Yeah. Okay. So, (laughs) so if you want to, if you're hosting a summit or an event and, or even if you have a podcast and you just want to get some really, you know, credible people, um, to speak, uh, you know, to be a guest, uh, one thing I did was I put a call out on haro.com there's another one in Australia called sourcebottle.com, which is similar. Uh, and then I literally had (laughs) uh, something I did not prepare for. Uh, I had like a hundred people send me, you know, respond to those call outs. And so now wow. I had this additional process of having to vet through all these applications um, and then check everyone's bio, check their websites, see what, you know, um, look at videos of them speaking and, and really going through that process of uh, speaker review, right? Just to, to see are they fit. Um, and How long did that take? Uh, that process took about two months. Oh. Right. Um, okay. In terms of hours, if we were to, like measuring hours, I'd say for about about, mm, about ten hours total um, to do that. So you, probably a weekend. Um, but I was also building a business full time, <laughs> so I was trying to run this summit. Okay, so um, fortunately, I had uh, co-pilots. So I had my my wife helping me out, and also we had our um, oper- systems guru. Uh, uh, video editor Ken, so he, he also helped out, and uh, we also had a, a, a virtual assistant who helped us put all that together. So it was a, a small team of four um, doing this as a side hustle. It wasn't our main thing, uh, and then we were we took I think five months from idea to execution, uh, and I had to I had to take a whole week off work just to run the summit and be online and be present for everyone and and manage all the guests and manage all the uh, attendees and and tickets and all, all the, the fun stuff that comes with running summits, as you would know. So um, I remember that you used Hey Summit to um, run your uh, event. How was it uh, using that platform? So we did a partnership with Hey Summit. Um, they were still la- like in that early launch phase of, of um, their journey. Uh, and so they came on board as a, a partner and they offered. So one thing that we did um, uh was look at what what platforms could we use f- to host the summit. Uh, we looked at, I mean, the natural thing was to say, well, could could we use Zoom to do that? Um, but we we wanted 
we quickly worked out that it'd be a hassle to have ticketing on Eventbrite and then have you know the hosting platform for the interviews and then have uh, like just a whole series of different tools to try and package it all together. And so Hey Summit, when I came across it, uh, I think they did a um, campaign on AppSumo. Um, yes. So when I saw it, I reached out to Rob, who's the, the CEO, uh, and we had a conversation. We jumped on his Zoom, had a chat, and I said, and he he basically said, look you know, you're launching a summit, uh, that's what we're doing and we're looking for case studies, so why don't we partner up? And, we, and they were happy to offer a, like a, a cool prize um, as part of that, you know, if one of our attendees could win uh, the, their, their business plan, which is worth quite a bit of money. Uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> you know, now to answer the question, how was it using the platform? Um, we have to remember this was an early version of the platform, so there were obvious kinks. Right, so, so it, it's not the evolved platform that it is now two years later, um, but uh, at the time it, it, it really cut down a lot of the issues that we had trying to piecemeal together a bunch of tools, right? And so for us, it, um, it, it was just what we needed. Uh, it, it did a lot of the, uh, the speaker management side of things, uh, which was really useful and really helpful. Um, and, you know, that was, a game changer because it, we, we, we were spending a lot of time creating speaker assets and doing images to give to all the speakers so they could promote and you know doing all of that stuff and, and here it was a platform where you could literally point the speaker to a link and say hey go into there and just fill out your bio right and, and give us your images and um, the, the tool itself would create social media images for you uh, you know and, and some other cool features like um, uh, create affiliates so you could create an affiliate link or what we call or I think there was called a partner link uh, and we gave that partner link to every speaker and said use your partner link when you're promoting so that way we can track if anyone comes in and buys tickets and then we give you a commission so that was part of the partner strategy um, and so there was a lot of benefit more upside than there was downside um, and there was a list of as we were using it there were uh, about uh, I think we had identified about 10 different issues we had with the experience um, and, and uh, that that users had with the experience uh, and they've since you know improved I don't know they've done all of them but they have improved on some of those things so uh, I'd probably give it a, a 8 out of 10 um, at the time okay. uh, and, and now uh, I've also seen some more sophisticated platforms like if you know CMX and, and they, they do a summit called CMX Summit uh, and which is now owned by Bevy uh, they've got a platform Bevy itself is a platform um, for online events and so mm -hmm. there are much more depending on large scale you want your event to be there are there are better platforms out there okay but if you're starting out I'd, I'd say yeah go play, go do hey summit like it, it's a useful summit uh, platform yeah I believe so um, how was it getting your uh, speakers to fill out their uh, bios did you have to uh, do anything special or did you just ask and they complied no, you know, that never happens that way. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, we basically, I mean, what it came down to was saying, okay, we would withdraw the invitation, we get them to fill out the speaker agreement. So here's the terms and conditions of you becoming a speaker. Um, and then so that was a challenge. <laughs> um, and then the second challenge was getting the presentations and the, the talk topics and uh, and then the bios and images and, and brand logos and all those sort of things. So we, uh, we, and we had, remember, we had a short amount of time to pull it off. And so we basically said, you know what, we will facilitate the whole thing. Um, and so we had a series of follow-up sequences, uh, you know, that, that Cindy, who, uh, my wife, she, she was managing, this, she managed speakers. So she would then uh, go through a process of, we, we sat down and mapped out a whole, like timeline like every day every week for the next four months what that's going to look like um wow. and then we had we had specific yeah if i showed you the the spreadsheet you'd probably freak out uh and, and we <laughs> and we basically said um look, by this date we need to have all bios in by this date we need to have all prizes in and you know we had a schedule uh and so we and and, and some speakers are really good. Like they would get it, you know, we'd say by this day, can you give these things, add these assets to us? And they would do it. Um, some others we would have to, had to chase. Uh, but we, you know, we got there in the end. Um, and, and this is an uh, important tip for anyone listening to this is, is like plan ahead of time and then build in some, some uh, what we call fat, some, some additional space uh, for that follow-up 
because you know and and we don't blame the speakers like people get busy right so i mean they're running their own businesses and or, or they, they're working for their own companies or whatever they're doing um and they're, they're speaking in other events as well and so um just you know don't underestimate the amount of time required to, to f facilitate all of that right so um what i learned from and rob was really good rob from hey summit was really good with this because when he uh when we got on a call together he he basically said look when you're running a summit um you know because i asked him you know do you have any tips for my first summit and he said uh you are essentially running three separate businesses one is speaker management right um two is uh, the the management of the um, participants, so the attendees, so that that's a whole business, and you have one person dedicated to managing all of that, um, and then the third would be the whole uh, logistics of the whole thing, right? So the the tools, the um, the all the all the assets that you're going to create, whether the the graphics, copy for emails. Um, if you're doing video assets like we did, so as part of the pre-launch to the summit, we had Ken. So I interviewed all the speakers um, to do a, like a three-minute teaser video uh, that would go onto social media, right? And and also and also put them on our podcast. Uh, and so that was happening, you know, before the event. So we so then we had to manage all that as well, right? Just to get the promotion happening. Um, so that's that that itself is an entire business. And Rob said that to me too. He said he warned me. He said, you know, that's an entire business on its own, right? Um, yes. And, and so you're juggling that whilst doing working full time with your clients. So um, I didn't get a lot of sleep during that period. But anyway, you know, it was worth the it was worth the investment and the time and the effort. Uh, but we learnt uh, like I, I by the end of it, I honestly I was burnt out, uh, and I felt that if I was going to do it again, we'd probably double the team size of the people working on the on the summit, uh, and we'd plan it twelve months in advance. Wow. I was just about to ask, yeah. um, with you and your wife working together, how did you guys know that it was time to hire a virtual assistant? I already had uh, a VA before, like for, for simple credit markings for my business. Uh, and so thankfully that was, yeah, the, they were, we were already working with the VA. Um, and if, I, if we hadn't, um, when we were speaking, we already knew that between her, myself and, and us running this thing that we need a, an additional support uh, like to do a lot of the, the emailing people follow-ups um, even just going into the summit tool and, and adding content into there and uh, you know like I, I wrote all the copy being that I'm the copywriter um, but then I have to go in and learn this whole new tool and put things everywhere and, and it's like no that that's not the best use of my time because I'm also managing the speaker and get like you know, communicating with the speakers. So, um, yeah, where, where you can have an assistant, even if they don't have to be full time, but even if you have them for a couple of hours a week, like that's still helpful. Yeah. That was really nice that she was there then to, uh, to help you guys. Absolutely. So, uh, would you say it's a lot easier coming onto someone else's summit than putting together your own? <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like if you've got your speaker as a speaker, if you've got your speaker kit ready and you've got what your topics are and maybe you've got, you know, um, your, your, your bio on, on a website somewhere or in a PDF or for me, it's on a Google doc. Um, it, it's very straightforward. Uh, the only thing you really need to focus on is rehearsing, uh, you know, your, your talk and, and customizing it for the audience that, that the summit is for. Um, what I really liked about working with Agora Pulse on their social pulse summit, uh, was that they're very strong at speaker management. So, I mean, they've, they've, like they're pros right like they've done it so many times now um, and you can see the difference between someone who's super organized and and has it down uh, with someone who's new uh, and still working it out like uh, night and day difference right and so when i yeah. went on their summit i was like wow um just the, the experience and i told mike who, who who he's moved on from that role but what, what i you know i said to him was like this is incredible even just from the initial invitation like you know that to as a speaker in clear bullet points you're going to get this 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 and this by these dates he already had it all scheduled and mapped out he gave it to me on day one um and said i need your talk in by you know your presentation deck in by this date and i need your assets by this date you know um just another level 
uh, and, and I think yeah, as a participant, as a speaker, um, it's far more easier to show up and talk than it is to organize the whole thing. Yeah. What I really like about um, the Agora Post uh, Summit was that it had so many moving parts and it didn't matter. I don't I didn't feel lost at all. I got my email saying to show up in their Facebook group. They had a, a kickoff. And then uh, I got another email saying, uh, come hang out with them and um, the Hey Sonic platform. They had embeds and um, I was moving back and forth and I thought it was fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was nice. I guess just not sitting in um, one platform mm. and to see the different chats they use, um, like the embed uh, for uh, Hey Summit. I think they use Discord. Yes. And yeah. So that was amazing right there for me. I was like, wow, just so many moving parts. I've always been told that the more moving parts you have, the more people you lose. But I don't know if it's because I know how to use Hey Summit or Facebook, but I didn't feel lost at all. And it was amazing. Yeah, like I, 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 you, you could go either way, couldn't you? Like I, I felt with their summit because I was familiar with the tools, uh, it wasn't that much of an issue for me. But I can see if it was a total um, someone who wasn't, you know, familiar with the Hey Summit, and maybe they weren't using Facebook uh, uh, and whatever tools. What else? I know there was another tool that kind of sat in between. Um, that could be an issue for people, so I could see that. Uh, but for for those of us who are been in the tech game long enough uh that was it was a really cool way to do it and, and i really liked the f feedback i gave to the mic was i liked that he did the or they did the um the round tables so you could jump into um it, it was almost like they were trying to create or recreate you know in-person conferences and where you could have breakout rooms and you could go into whatever topics you were interested in uh, and, and i'd never seen until that summit i hadn't seen anyone do that uh, and then when I saw the CMX Summit that came after that, uh, I was blown away because then they introduced something like, um, what was it, uh, photo booths. So you could do a virtual photo booth where you jump in a room and you take a photo of yourself, a selfie with the logo in the background, and then, then they would give you the, the button that you click on and you can share that on social media um, to let people know that you're at, in the event. Um, so that was really cool. And I'm starting to see these, these new things that people are testing around how to uh, make it more engaging for participants. I haven't seen the uh, photo booths yet, but I, I thought it was really nice with the, uh, the breakout rooms and uh, um, Zoom has a thing where you can name your breakout rooms and uh, you can let people go themselves. And that's what I really liked about um, AirMeet and the lounge. And now I've seen that people are starting to turn off the lounge feature because I usually go to the events and then skip it and just hang out in the lounge. <laughs> but I still love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I, I wish there was a way in AirMeet that, uh, have you used AirMeet yet? Not yet, no. I, I'm uh, familiar with it, but I haven't actually, yeah, gone in and played okay. with it. Yeah. So so recently, people are not turning on the button to uh, hang out in the lounge. So I wish, if they didn't want me to go to the lounge right away, that after the event is over, there's a toggle button that says the lounge is now open. That would be cool. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. Feedback to them, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I will do that. They're, they're very nice and they're um they're open to uh, listening to new suggestions. I like that about them. Yeah, that, that's always, it's always good when you have uh, software vendors or providers who, who do who listen to the feedback. Um, yeah, because I think that's where the opportunity is. You know, if I had the time and energy and and the where we, we fall to explore it, I'd probably look at developing a SaaS platform that does something like that. Um, but it's just. Yeah, that, I'm a long way from doing any of that kind of stuff. And then there's people who are doing it so well already. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to uh, use what I have. Um, I like to tell people I'm addicted to uh, AppSumo and I have so many uh, apps that do so many uh, different things. But like you said, um, I haven't really been talking to the uh, SaaS providers and um, telling them what I want. So maybe the more I talk to them, the more um, they could give me through the development of the app. Um, so, yeah. I gotta use what I have and talk to people. That makes uh, a good bit of sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. So, like I think you're in because of what you do. You're in a really fantastic position to do that. And I know Doc Williams is brilliant at this as well because you know I mean, he built his brand on teaching people how to use certain like, all these tools that come onto AppSumo. 
um, and he built that relationship really well, right? So he's, he's partnering with them, he's creating eBooks for them, he's doing all these sort of things. Uh, and I think you have that opportunity too, because you could really, you know, with, with focusing on virtual summits, you could really do solid reviews on each of the platforms that are out there um, and then have a direct interaction with their product manager or whoever it is that, that is the appropriate person. And, and um, I'm sure that they could, uh, you know, work with you because they're, they're trying to improve their, their tools uh, and, and you could come back to them and go, well, here's the feedback. Like, you know, this is what my audience is saying. This is what I've, I've been using the tool and this is what I'm seeing. Um, and they would appreciate that. And then I think you could build a nice partnership with them. I'm trying to get into partnerships now. I had a, a guest on uh, back in February, Jimmy Newson, who was talking about um, making partnerships. Uh, I just now felt brave enough to uh, venture out and try that. So I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, well, if you need any tips at all, I'm happy to share those with you. I've, I've been, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, well, let's talk. I mean, let's talk about it now. One thing. Um, Let's see if I can pull it up. I have a, um, there's a concept that I learned many years ago back when I was in the co-working world, uh, which is it's essentially, we call it the, the partnership triangle. And if you picture a triangle, uh, you can draw in Zoom, can't you? Uh, I, I think say, so. Do you want to share your screen? Uh, I don't have a visual to show you. I was going to yeah. say, if, if we could whiteboard it, I could draw it for you, but that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a triangle, so when you're thinking about partnerships, uh, all partnerships have three, three elements, right? You start with, um, so there are three things that make a partnership work. One is the brand. So one partner will have a strong brand, okay? The second thing is someone's going to have a product, all right? So, um, and a product, product can be a physical product, like a product that I'm holding, like you can't see it, but I'm holding a, a mug, um, or you could have, uh, a, a service could be a product, right? Um, if you package it as a product. And then the third th part of the triangle would be um, distribution. So you need a partner who has the reach and the audience, right? Uh, now the key thing is when you're doing partnerships, when you're talking with another prospective partner, you, you're only looking for them to provide one thing, okay? So because in terms of, you want it to be a fair exchange, right? So if you have, um, audience, like say you have an audience here with your, your podcast and, and you go to someone else and you say, well, I want you to partner with me because you've got the brand, but I also want you to give us the product, right? Now it, f it feels unbalanced, right? Because it's like you're asking for two things and you're providing one. Um, so it, those partnerships really work, right? But when you can, when you bring one thing and they've got one thing, like say, so maybe we use the, the Agora Pulse Summit, Agora Pulse had the brand and they also had a distribution, okay? Um, they came to me, I had the product in terms of the talk. The talk was a product, right? So they're like, okay, well, you bring the talk, right? And we give you distribution, all right? Because you get in front of our audience, right? They also had the brand in that scenario, but they, but they also, if, you, if you look at their, their partnership list, they also had other brands that they were partnering with, right? So they were leveraging uh, other brands, some of them are bigger brands than, than, than their platform. Um, so then that's how we built a triangle. Okay. So when you're building partnerships, that's what you want to look for is you need one partner. So for you, you might have, what would be, um, okay. Let, for you be the summit or this, this podcast that you're hosting now, this, this could be viewed as distribution. All right. Um, because you've got an audience. Right. So now if you went to a software vendor, OK, what do you think software vendors are looking for? Uh, more people to use their products. Boom. <laughs> right. So they've got the product. Right. But they don't necessarily have the brand. Right. So they've got the product, especially within these new up and coming tools that are coming onto AppSumo. OK, because these, these are early stage startups. They're not well developed platforms. Right. So they're looking for audiences right who, who are the audiences that would potentially buy their product right so if you went to them and you said well i've got an audience you know because i've got this podcast or i've got, and i'm on youtube and i'm on these things and then you've got a product right why don't we you know interview you on our pod podcast and you could probably put up one of your products as a prize or a gift to one of our audience members right uh, so that's a nice partnership okay now 
then if you want to do a conference or a summit, now you look, now what you're looking for is okay. The speakers typically are um, they they will typically have a product that or a service they're trying to sell, all right, um, or they might have a you know or they might have distribution. So so it depends on what you're looking for from each partner. But then you know you identify okay where is the gap for you, right? So for me, I have I've been working on a product, and your product can be some training that you put together, right? So I've got a, um, a five minute webinar that I put on my website and you can go and sign up for free. And that's a training on how to, um, uh, how to put together your, your plan for using case studies to grow your business, right? So that's a, that's a training that I developed with a PDF workbook. Okay, so that's a product, it's a digital product, but a product nonetheless, right? So now when I go onto pitch podcasts to try and get onto to people's podcasts, I will say to them, I, I can deliver knowledge to your audience, which is a product because it's a knowledge. And, but with that, they, you also get access, you know, your audience will also get access to my um, case study toolkit, which has you know, the training and it has the, the workbook, right? And that's a value to your audience, right? So then they're more likely to say yes, because it's like I'm coming with a product, right? Um, and so, that's I hope that's making is that making sense or do you have any questions around that I'm wondering what I could offer and when you said I could do a training um that clicked with me um I like long form content so I can repurpose it and that also something that I've learned from you how to break up content and uh, redistribute it so that's what I'm thinking when, when you said that so yeah, so, so far absolutely <laughs> you could do it totally I mean you could package up a series of your interviews you've already done. So if you had, you know, um, if you had specific themes, like how to market a virtual summit, right? And then you, you took five of your best uh, interviews, put that together in, in, a, in a, you know, in a Google Doc, and, and but then also had, um, uh, maybe you, you took, you had a VA or, or, you, or yourself, you took some time to pull out from each of those interviews, you know, five key tips or three key tips you know, from each interview and made it really practical. And then you had, it, then you turn that into a PDF checklist of, you know, here's 25 tips that have come from experts in marketing summits, right? That's a product, right? So you could literally just turn it into a PDF and, and that's a guide, you know, and you could um, put together a training if you wanted to, or you could just cut out pieces of the audio and put it all into one video um one audio file there's many many ways you can play that but uh what i find is particularly powerful if you're going to use training is to always have a, a competing workbook right so people you know we're just trained now um you know we've been programmed in long enough to say oh if there's a pdf guide i'm gonna go download that thing um even though we may not use it um but but then when you combine that with a five minute or, or seven minute training, uh, that becomes super powerful. And I want to give a, a shout out to Webinar Ninja and Omar at Webinar Ninja who taught me that uh, because I, cause what he's, you know, they run, a, that's another cool platform that I've been using for Evergreen webinars. Uh, and one thing I learned through, he, through, the, through their training is, you know, right now where the market is, the market is quite sophisticated, our audience is have seen lead magnets, they know what PDFs are, they know, hey, if you give me a PDF, you, you want my email address. Uh, but they're not, you know, we, we all understand the game. Um, so now you're gonna need, you have to make it more compelling than just a PDF guide, right? So it has to be, no, I'm gonna give you a PDF and I'm also going to give you uh, a webinar, you know, or I'm gonna give you a series of interviews that I haven't released publicly before, you know, or I'm going to give you um, a three part video series right whatever it may be um and so that then that becomes more powerful right like it's, it's not it's no longer good enough just to give someone a pdf you have to give them a pdf and then train them on how to use and implement the pdf right like what's in there right so uh that's much more valuable right because it, it's i can read the thing that you've given me but if you're also teaching me how to use that those that those tips right now um, and I walk away with having actually taken an action, right, towards my goal, then that's super valuable, 
because it's almost like you've had a, you know a coach sitting with you or a trainer training you uh, you know in your room in your house in your office right so uh, I hope that's been been helpful for you yes um, so while you were talking I'm thinking about all the tools I could use for this PDF or ebook uh, beacon um, I've been uh, taking these videos and chopping them up uh, using a perfect recall and moving those uh, clips into a uh, Vadu to make a uh, video landing pages. So I have, uh, these are, I'm going through all my AppSumo deals. <laughs> so I've been trying to figure out how to use a uh, Guru Can. And I'm thinking those clips I take from um, Perfect Recall, I could uh, put them in there also. How you said, uh, find one topic. A lot of uh, my guests have talked about uh, goal setting. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be a good one right there. Yeah. Absolutely. And also just you sharing what you just did like right now, for me, that workflow of how you repurpose content, that's huge because the biggest challenge, a lot of, you know, people who want to run events or people who are um, utilizing events to grow their businesses and their brands, the biggest challenge is time. It's always time. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so if you can show them a workflow, like he, here's the three tools or four tools that you mentioned, and this is how I use it. Um, you know, uh, to, to take, you know, an interview or a series of interviews and turn it into a digital product, uh, that's massive, right? And, and people, like, I'm like, hey, if you get that going, Erica, I want to sign up for that, right? So, uh, because, it, like, I, I get, even for me, I get overwhelmed because there's so many tools, right? Um, and I just want a simplified process on how to, to take, uh, you know, how to, how to utilize my resources better. Um, and, and if I could hand it over to my VA and let my VA handle 90% of the process, even better, right? Um, but, uh, well, yeah. I got to tell you this. Um, you're, you're a really nice guy. You talked to me on LinkedIn. I was struggling with content marketing. And you asked if anybody needs help. And I was like, me, I need help. And you told me, um, you asked me what I was doing. I told you my long list of things I wanted to do. And you told me to simplify it. I know I didn't get back to you, but that is what I came up with to use what I have and to simplify. So for me, that that that's simplified. And I think uh, I learned that from you. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you sharing that with me. I remember the conversation. It's like, yeah, you was like, boom, all this crazy energy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I know what that's like because I go through that and my wife goes crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, to be able to simplify the process and, and, and you're only, you know, we can only do so much, right? Um, and one thing, like a content marketing tip is, and I, and I, I shared a template uh, a couple of days ago that I, that I created in Notion, uh, which is my tool of the month. Um, and it, uh, it basically is just to help people get like very dialed into what their social LinkedIn uh, content plan is, right? Because I'm seeing, you know, people ad hoc posting things and, um, if I'm looking at it, the threads, it, it, it's like one day you're talking about your dogs and the other day you're talking about, you know, some cool tip on, on how to you know, use a certain tool or whatever it may be. And then now you're talking about remote work and I'm going, what's going on? Like, I'm a bit confused. <laughs> um, and so when you have a plan, you know, and this is, goes for running summits and events as well, when you have a plan and s strong themes and a clear, like, this is a problem that, that this thing will solve for you uh, and for this type of audience, uh, then, then that that just makes things easier, right? Um, so always have a content plan. Always have, um, you know, like you can Google content strategy template, right? Or you can go to my site and grab mine. But um, whichever way you want to go, um, I would yeah. definitely recommend yours. <laughs> I just found that it, it's, I know what it's like to have like so many ideas and so many things, and and then. But the problem for your audience is they get confused and they don't know, you know, you want to be known for, you know, something rather than be known for everything. And, and, you know, I don't, look, it's okay to be multi-passionate, which I know you are and I am and a lot of our, this, the people listening will be, um, but personal branding, right? Or this whole idea of branding is, is really just saying, what's your key differentiator? What makes you stand out amongst a, a group of 50 or 100 or a million of other people doing similar things to you right 
and, and you know and, and so when you can dial that in and say well i'm the virtual summit person that, that's what i talk about right um and and i'm going to combine that with uh you know everything that has to do with running those events but also the tools and the logistics and the background behind it and you know all those kind of things uh, and that's what i specialize in and you stick with that long enough people will, will know that right yeah. um for me like i've become the case study guy right and that's by design because i i knew i couldn't just be another content marketer like you literally search content marketing you know specialists um uh, there's a gazillion of them right uh, and so it's like, okay, well, what can I do? And this, I really, I, this really came to me um, last February when I lost a, a key contract with a client because of COVID, uh, you know, and, and they said, you look, we just don't have the, the budget to, to continue working with you like we have. Um, and so I thought, okay, what am I going to do? I can't just go out there and say, I write articles for everybody because that's everyone else is saying that, right? Uh, but then I realized, oh, one thing that I'm really strong at that I specialize in is doing interviews like this like I, I get people on my podcast or i've been helping produce three other podcasts for the last three years uh, for other companies uh, and, and but what i'm really strong at is interviewing people and then getting their stories um and uh, and then really finding out what motivates them to use a product what motivates them to buy a service right so then that you know and then i married that with what's a common challenge that a lot of businesses have particularly small businesses they don't have enough proof or social proof that what they say they can do actually works right, right. Uh, and so it's like well they need case studies you know because if you can have imagine going to someone's website for the first time and you can see they've got 20 case studies of all these clients saying that you know erica is amazing helping me run virtual summits right um it's like well i'm going to believe that person more than i'm going to believe three other websites where they're claiming to be summit strategists and they have no social proof right um that's just the way the world we live in you know so when i'm looking at a linkedin profile i'm looking at how many recommendations have there been from people who've worked with you who say you know you're amazing at what you do etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and so that's another tip for everyone listening if you're not collecting linkedin recommendations do it because if you're working in a b2b professional services space uh or if you're looking for a job you know most recruiters will be looking at linkedin uh, most clients will be looking at linkedin uh, and so your recommendations if you over time, you know, build those up, every client you work with, every partner you work with. So for me, you'll notice, Erica, like some of my recommendations are from uh, Agora Pulse. They're from some of these um, summit hosts who, after the event is over, I actually emailed the, um, the person running it and said, hey, do you, do you mind leaving me a recommendation on what your audience has said about me as a speaker, right? Or what it's been like uh, you being the organizer working with me as a speaker you know and so they were more than happy to do that um and surprisingly I, i'm probably like the only person who actually made that request you know a lot of and they had like over i don't know how many 50 speakers and so <laughs> it's not common right as the organizer or, or as the speaker to ask for that referral to ask for that testimonial and, and and you're shooting yourself in the foot if you don't do it right yeah, I think I should ask and give more um, LinkedIn recommendations. Like as many times as you've helped me, I don't think I've given you one, but I will do that. <laughs> I appreciate you. You don't have to, but that would, you know, same thing. You I would do the same to you. Yeah, but that, that that's that's what it is. And, and you want people to know, oh, okay, that's like you're telling a story. Personal branding is all about telling a story, um, but more importantly, what's the story that other people who've worked and collaborated with you, what are they saying about you, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can kind of hope that they go out there and tell people that you're a good person and that you've been nice to work with, uh, or you can make it official and say, hey, do you mind just leaving, you know, taking five, three minutes to write something about our experience, you know? And you want to do it while it's still fresh in their mind, right? So there's no good for me now, a year later, to go to Agora Pulse and say, hey, do you mind leaving me a, a review? Because um, they've done you know, five events since then and then hundreds of speakers, right? Yeah. Um, so right after the engagement, that's the best time to do it. Yeah. So um, listening to you on the Agora Pulse Summit, I took that uh, LinkedIn strategy and I used it for um, other people, just, just uh, um, making the event page and um, 
using the link to their talk or their event. And that went amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought it was uh, also good for um, was it affiliate marketing. But uh, I'm not sure how often you should uh, try it. I haven't done it that much. I maybe done it for like two people. But um, mm-hmm. both times, uh, very good results. Do you mean in terms of um, using events for affiliates or, or what do you mean by affiliates? So you know how you set up the LinkedIn event page and yeah. you have that one link you can put out. Mm-hmm. So that link is my affiliate link for another person's event. Oh, got it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So um, messaging them, telling them to um, the uh, possible attendees, telling them about the event, how I feel about the speaker, stuff like that. That went over really well. So, um, but I've only done it for two people. So I, I just, that's why I think it's a really good strategy. Well, that's and, awesome. Yeah, because now now like you document that as a process and then you can systemize that, right? So so you, or create as a checklist for every event that you do for a client or for an affiliate or a partner, um, follow the process, right? Uh, and, and that and that's valuable. Um, and, and that's I, something I, that I, 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 that's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> right? Because and that becomes that can also be a product for you. Like if you went, okay, this is how, you know, um, you've been able to do this and these were the results. Uh, that that's really really great because um, I think LinkedIn is underutilized as a platform for events. Um, you know, more people tend to go to Facebook, right? But it comes back to who's your audience and where are they, right? And, and LinkedIn. Look, I'm just biased because I've been using it for so long now. But um, I also know that on a professional level people who go to LinkedIn, the intent is different to someone going to Facebook or to Instagram or to TikTok, right? Like, like it's, we're going there for different reasons, right? If I'm going to LinkedIn, I'm going to network, like that's my intention, uh, and I'm going to connect with professionals, right? If I want to look at photos of pets and holidays and things like that, I'm not going to LinkedIn, I'm going to IG, right? Or I'm going to whatever else, you know, Pinterest for some people, right? So it, it's, it's understanding the audience and who you're trying to reach. Yeah. Do you have any uh, tips for finding your target audience? For finding your target audience? Like is if yeah. you don't know who they are or do you mean finding them on LinkedIn if you know who they are? Let's go with finding them on LinkedIn. So who's the tar- give me an idea of who's, who's the target audience you're trying to reach. Um, like for this show, I reach out to um, coaches, consultants, uh, experts, thought leaders, trainers. Yep, perfect. <laughs> okay, so... The number one mistake that I see people making on LinkedIn and networking in general is they go after the leads, right? And what I mean by that, excuse me, is they go after the potential prospective client. And so what I've learned over the years, and when I started my first business uh, running a Facebook agency, uh, Facebook ad ag- agency with a business partner, that was 2012, um, was you could do that like you could go and find one client at a time which is a long process right or you could figure out who already has your audience of clients right who who is already bringing in 10 or 20 or 100 of potential clients at one time already right um and you want to go and partner with those people right so uh this this strategy is called borrowing someone's audience right um and it's also it's a partnership strategy, right? So LinkedIn is really good for connecting with prospective partners, strategic partners, uh, and also for connecting with journalists. So if you want to get into media, right, most journalists have a LinkedIn profile um, and it's easier to connect to them through LinkedIn or Twitter than it is to send their company, you know, press releases, right? Like this is a mistake. If you spend all your time sending press releases to people, uh, the hit rate is very low, right? But if you connect with, the, if you know that, if, it, if you identify the journalist who writes about the, the, the topic that you specialize in and you go connect with them on LinkedIn and on Twitter and then you develop a relationship with them, then over time, 
right? Then you can say, well, hey, I've got this idea for, a, you know, an article or a topic or, you know, uh, whatever it may be. Or I'm, I'm about to host this event that's coming up in six months from now or 12 months from now. Or I'm working with a client who's hosting this event. And I think this would be relevant to your audience. Then they're more likely to, you know, uh, to work with you. Yeah. Um, now, coming back to, okay, I'm looking for trainers and coaches and these sort of things. My advice would be who is speaking to that audience already right think about okay well are there associations are there publications where coaches and consultants and trainers go to to read are there blogs are there podcasts that they're going to to learn things right um, and then on a google sheet or whatever tool you're using you know pen and paper if, if that's your preferred method you know just really brainstorm 20 or 50 or 100 um, potential organizations associations podcasts youtube channels uh where your ideal partner right um what do they who are they and then you use linkedin to go and connect with those people and this is what i did um what i've been doing like i i i rarely go onto linkedin and start searching for so for my audience they're b2b similar to you um but rarely do i go on and search for individuals right what i'm searching for is uh what are the associations what are the publications what are the platforms so here's something that's relevant particularly relevant to you erica is your audience are using tools okay now you need to you can identify what are the top five tools that they're using so if you know that most of them use slack most of them might be using active campaign for their email or maybe they're using Infusionsoft, or maybe they're using ConvertKit, whatever it is, right? Um, you make a list of these. These are the five or ten tools that most of my audience are using. Okay, um, I know that you're also teaching people about new tools, but you know, typically you're talking about the you know the summit tools. But what about the tools they use for product um, project management? Are they using Asana? Are they using Trello? Are they using uh, what's the hot one right now? Monday, <laughs> click up, right? Um, so now each of these, each one of these tools, they have communities, right? They usually have Facebook groups or uh, circle groups or whatever these platforms are. Um, so you can go and embed yourself within those communities, all right? And you become the specialist at virtual summits inside the community for, you know, Asana, for example, right? And so anyone that's in that community who's there because they're there to learn about Asana, but then if they mention, you know, and you mention, well, you know, I actually help people pull together summits. Um, and they go, and, and by the way, here's how I do it using Asana, right? The tool, right? Here's my Asana checklist. And you put it in, you pop it into the group. That's how you get leads and inquiries. Because now they go, oh, right. Um, wow, right. You're, you're the strategist, okay? Um, and that's uh, I like uh, that checklist for the tools. Yeah, like right. So, and, that, and that's that's a uh, like Doc. He's a very smart guy, so he does that, right? Um, but uh, for that, that's something that, I, that I've used over and over again. It's like when I go to search, I'm searching for who's the contact. You know, we talked about maybe for you, it's going to be the product manager, or it could be the marketing manager for for a lot of these tools. And communities and so you want to go and connect with them so for me something that's worked really well for the last five to ten years has been identifying what are the communities where my target audience perspective bias is hanging out in right so i know that you know uh, some of them are in um uh what works network so i don't know if you're familiar with them um some of them are sumo links they hang out in the absolute communities some of them hang out in um, what's another one uh, that I'm active in? Superfast Business. So if you don't know James Schramko, um, Superfast Business Podcast, check it out. One of the best podcasts out there for, for small business. Um, but he's, he's, he runs a membership and he's been doing it for the last 15 years. And, and so that's a really good community. So, But there's a whole bunch of them depending on what your, your area of focus is. And then spend time connecting to those people on LinkedIn right and, and finding ways to add value to them right maybe you offer to help them host their next summit or you um you know give them some guidance around hey have you got some events that are coming up here's my checklist on how to run that event 
right? Uh, or whatever it may be, right? For me, typically it's, hey, do you want me to do a case study for you? Do you want me to write some art- an article for you or do a guest post on your um, blog, right? Um, stuff like that. And so that's the way I would be focusing my attention. Um, you can certainly connect with 500 trainers and coaches and consultants, um, but you know how long it takes to connect with 500 people uh, when you can connect with 10 people that have each person has 50 of your audience already in their communities, right? So it's your choice. <laughs> so glad you told me that. You know, I feel like I've been half-stepping. So I've asked my phone, where do coaches, consultants, experts hang out? It told yeah. me Facebook and LinkedIn. So I, uh, I asked my phone, what groups do they hang out in? And it told me. So I went and connected, uh, joined those groups. But I didn't reach out to the moderator. And mm. I didn't think about that until you just said it. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, you can go to the moderator. Now, here's the key, right? You want to be active in those groups. And I would pick, you know, you've got capacity. So, so you know, maybe focus on five groups. Okay, you jump in, maybe you jump into 20 groups and you observe. Okay, which are the ones, what are the top most engaged groups of the, of the 10 or 50 or 20, right? Then you start stripping them away and just focus on, if you only have time to really focus on three groups, what are those three, right? And, and, and you resonate with the messages going on in there, you resonate with the moderators are saying or the content they're posting, um, you know, and you'll find your people, you'll find your tribes, right? Uh, for me, even though, I, like, if you look at my Facebook, I'm connected to like 200 groups, right? I'm not active in 200 groups, really. I'm probably in five groups, really, where I'm actually posting stuff and engaging, commenting other people's stuff, um, and and with no intention to sell. My intention really is just be helpful, just share tips, respond and answer. You know, the one thing that really annoys me is when you know someone's asking a question inside of a community, and, and then someone responds by saying, "Yeah, I can help you. Send me a DM." right? It's like, no, like that's, that's obviously you're going to pitch them to buy something from you. Um, you know, the best thing you can do is actually respond in the group with your answer. Here's three things I would do right now, right? Go and do these things. Don't send them off to your website. Don't send them to a lead magnet. Um, and just go, you know, this is how I do it. Um, and, and be transparent because you're not only responding to that one person, you're responding to the entire community. Right. Yeah. So when when 10 people see that and and oh, well, by the way, there's one person who really needs what you're offering right now. They're going to reach out to you and say, hey, Erica, I saw you post this thing. I want to talk to you. Right. And that's happened to like I've, that's how that's how I find clients just by giving value. And, you, you know, you're coming earlier. You know, I'm, I'm just helpful. Yes, because I know that that gets reciprocated over time. Right. Uh, and it doesn't always mean from the person I'm helping. Right. Sometimes it just means that someone in that group somewhere in that network will come back to me and go, I remember you said that thing on that summit or to that person. And that's why I'm talking to you today. Doc Williams says, when you have the time to respond to um, a post, do it with video. Yes. Oh, he says that gives them a sense of um, how it is to work with you. And um, if your mannerisms uh, is a reciprocal thing that they have also. Absolutely. And it's so rare. You know, I, I should do more of it, honestly, but my phone just died, so I don't have that ability <laughs> right now. Um, but also, I'm a copywriter, so I want people to see my writing, right? But that that's me. But for you, 100%. And for Doc, like, he's killing it on the video thing. Um, yeah. So 100%, like, work to your strengths, right? And that's the thing. If you if you suck at video, probably don't do video. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... You know, if you know, I'm not saying you particularly, Erica, but whoever's listening, um, you know, but if you, you know, if you want to stand out, there have been occasions where I have jumped in and done video and people have reached out to me as a result of me doing that because, you know, maybe there were 20 other people posting on that thread, but I'm the only one who put a video in there and that just spoke to the person saying, hey, that's different and I want to talk to you because you're different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So- Every time I, I've seen you um, on someone else's show, like that just makes me more of a fan. So yes, you should do more video. If you <laughs> host another summit, I will be there. So yes. I appreciate that. Are you well, planning I, on hosting another summit? I actually am. Uh, so we can have a chat about that um, because I'm going to need some help. And 
but it's not going to be 25 speakers like it's, or 50 or 100. Like I'm going to keep it small. Um, I'm going to do a micro summit and it's going to, my intention right now is to, to only work with five partners um, and it's going to be small enough that it's not going to take up a whole day of people's time. Um, m maybe two or three hours max. Um, and it's just like the lean version of what we did with Remote Business Summit. <laughs> like, um, maybe one day I'll go back to doing the bigger scale summit. Uh, but the issue I'm having right now with summits is there's so many of them. Um, and it's like, I rarely sign up for them myself. So I'm just wondering if the market's saturated. Now you might tell me differently because you're, you're, you're in that world all the time. Um, but you know, maybe, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. What are some, what summits do you sign up for and attend? And what summits do you stay away from? Uh, how do you decide? So, um, I have been a fan of the three day event, but lately I've felt like, uh, I'm being held hostage. Um, they're trying to, uh, create the Stockholm syndrome. And I, I do like my captives, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to sit in this chair all day. Mm -hmm. Um, I really do appreciate it when they send me the, um, the recordings and I can listen to it uh, on my walks. Uh, I do appreciate that, but I don't uh, sign up for the um, three days as much as I have. Um, I'm a big fan of the um, three day that is three hours. Um, and um, before you came last week, I talked to uh, Nyota Gordon. She has a summit coming up on the 21st and she's going to uh, do an email drip with it. So I'm excited to try that out. Um, Joe Sales, he was on in, um, I want to say March. His summits are uh, 30 minutes for a week. So he has seven speakers and they're all are 30 minutes. And I thought that was amazing. I got stuff from um, each speaker uh, from that short little 30 minutes, like stuff I can implement right away. Yeah. Uh, so um that one and um, the three days, uh, three hours. I think I'm a fan of that. Um, have you heard of the uh, social media takeover? Yes, I have. Yeah. Love that too. So uh, mm -hmm. I think that one is the next one I'm going to try. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Any of those uh, interest you? <laughs> uh, well, I think, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm curious by the 30 minute one. That's attractive to me. Uh, I, I'm really not for, like there was one yesterday which, which was hosted by Culture Amp and they did a whole day. No, it was half, it was four hours, but like I, I just don't have time in the day to pull that out of like I'm doing client work and other things. Uh, mm -hmm. And replays are nice, but I, I rarely go and watch replays now. Like it's just, there's something about being live and interacting in the chat and, and you know, having that experience. Um, I think I've just gone through multiple years of attending a ton of summits and then I've just gone, okay, I need to take a break from these things uh, and work on building my own products and doing my own podcast and, and whatever it is. Um, but I am, yeah, I do like the sound of the social media takeover and, and the 30 minute, you know, what, uh, one for five days or whatever that, that looks like. Um, I think you, you could do a video or a, uh, a blog post on, just the different types of summit formats you've, that you've seen and pros and cons of each. And I think that would be a really useful guide for your clients and prospective clients and partners. Um, because if, if you could just point, you know, if you pointed me to, hey, he, here's five or seven different formats that I've seen um, and what I like and what I don't like about each one of these, then that's really helpful for me who's planning the next summit. Because I'm going, okay, what, what would, you know, um, and I'm also curious about what, different organizers are doing to um, encourage participation rates, right? Because I've been to summits where there's a lot of promotion, um, but then when you show up, there's no attendees, you know, uh, and then you're like, you said you had an audience of, you know, 5,000 people. I don't even see 10, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. And so that's, yeah, so, so that that's another area where I think a lot of um, organizers that want to run events, 
they, they would want some help with as well. It's kind of like, how do I get people to actually show up? Um, how do I get people to buy if, if they're putting putting a price on it? Um, you know, and it's, this whole, there's all these different strategies and how to do that. But I think you're more of a specialist on that than I am. Well, um, like I said, uh, when you tell me about the LinkedIn strategy, when you're um, speaking at the Agora Post, I hadn't heard it heard of it before. I was like, I was amazed that um, a summit organizer would even share that with me. So yeah, I was very happy and pleased with that. Um, um, I was gonna say, um, I went to a three day event. It was eight to ten hours for the three days, and they told me um, if I buy into it, it's ninety seven dollars. If I bought the upsell with the wow box, it was one ninety seven, and I would get the recordings. I didn't right. think I would be there three days, eight to 10 hours. So I went and got the upsell so I could have the recording. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of the times they said, uh, go ahead and get it because um, you're going to need the recording. So I, I got the recording and it will, they say, it, but if you're here live, you're not going to get the recording to like six months later. Stayed there. Yeah. So that's why I felt like I, I'm, I'm held hostage. So um I got the re, uh, I got the upsell for the recording, and um, they gave it to me within two weeks. But there was stuff in the recording that I did not see in the live. Like uh, they offered a free day for anyone who um, couldn't uh, pay the ninety seven right away. Mm. That they gave you a sample of the first day, and it was via uh, YouTube. And I was like, that's a nice strategy. Yeah. So. I wanted to put that out there just in case you wanted to live stream uh, a portion of your um, 30 minute event. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. I've seen someone do um, something like that where they, they kind of did the first session or the keynote that was live streamed. And then to get access to the rest of the sessions, then you would have to upgrade um, or sign up or whatever it is. And I've seen different variations of that. Uh, so yeah that's a good idea so i'm gonna make a note of that and uh yeah we'll, we'll come back to that um with um what was it um air meet um you can turn off the lounge turn it on but what i was thinking is my first day or to anyone who didn't pay to attend to i want to gate the lounge so i'm going to use their rtmp to uh stream it via youtube but if they want to uh, enter the lounge, they would pay and I would give them the link to air meet so they can enter the lounge. So yeah, that's cool. Because if you, if those people who are wanting the community, the access into the, the lounge and, and that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. That's like the VIP area, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. Well, you know, um, Anthony, I have kept you over time because I have enjoyed our conversation. So could you tell people where they can reach you? Absolutely. So I've put together a, a little gift pack, if you want to call that, uh, for your audience. So if you want to just head over to simplecreativemarketing.com uh, forward slash talk virtual, uh, and I'm sure Erica can share that link, uh, then you can go and, and I'll put some goodies in there for you, um, some guides and things around case studies and, and, and what I specialize in. So and that's a, if you want to connect with me, that's the best place to go. Yes, you're definitely going to want to connect with Anthony and read about uh, how to do case studies. So, um, Anthony, I appreciate you sharing your time with me. I know it's like, what, one, two in the morning where you are. <laughs> so I really tell by my background, but yeah, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate your time, Erica, and please keep doing what you're doing. And, and you, I've been observing just your your you know, your, your evolution uh, and it, it's been fantastic. And I'm, I'm glad I'm being able to support you along the way too. Great. All right. Bye.